The Hong Kong chief executive, Carrie Lam, has just announced on local television, as expected, a full withdrawal of the controversial extradition bill. Now, the bill would have allowed suspects to stand trial in mainland China. It is one of five demands from pro-democracy protesters who have taken to the streets for 13 weeks now in widespread, sometimes violent protests. Now, the four other demands are for uh, the resignation of the chief executive, Carrie Lam. They've asked for that. They've also asked for an independent inquiry into police brutality for those arrested to be exonerated and released, as well as greater democratic freedoms. Now, Lam also addressed the other demands by protesters. She said that the government would use the existing inquiry as opposed to setting up an independent investigation and that the release of protesters from detention is not an acceptable demand. This is something that protesters have been waiting for for the past three months. And as we've heard from Joshua Wong and, and other uh, protesters on, on social media, other, other citizens here in Hong Kong, is that this is too little, too late. Now, I was at the press conference with Carrie Lam yesterday at uh, her offices when she fronted the media after that leaked uh, audio recording obtained by Reuters of her speaking to business people at a private luncheon last week where she said that if she had a choice, she would quit. That the havoc that she has caused here in Hong Kong through this extradition bill is unforgivable. Uh, she did, however, when pushed by the media, uh, say that she has never tendered her resignation to Beijing. She says, I've never considered uh, resigning to Beijing. Uh, we know that Carrie Lam has been under enormous pressure. This is a, a woman, a 62-year-old woman, a, a lifetime bureaucrat who has had to answer to, to not just the people of Hong Kong, but to Beijing. At the end of the day, Beijing is her master. And, and from what we have been hearing over the past couple of months, she put forward her resignation. Uh, Beijing didn't accept it. It, uh, Beijing also said we will not cave into those five demands. So the question, uh, Christy, other than will this quell the, the protest, is why has China allowed Carrie Lam to formally withdraw this very controversial extradition bill after saying for the last three months that it wouldn't do that? Now, uh, some commentators are saying that the upcoming National Day celebrations on the 1st of October, that is the, the 70th anniversary of the, the People's Republic of China, China, that that is a very uh, important day in the calendar for China and, and they don't want the violence here in Hong Kong, the protests here in Hong Kong to overshadow uh, those National Day celebrations. So the feeling certainly has been they need to get a handle on the situation here in Hong Kong so that the violence doesn't upstage what happens in China on the 1st of uh, October. Uh, but as we've been hearing, Protests are likely to continue. Standing up for the people. For who? For who? You're not speaking up for the minority, and I'm sticking up for the superiority. It's a confrontation that only lasted about 10 minutes. You don't allow me, you're going to go to In it, Ku Klux Klan members from Indiana and Kentucky were turned away from a park in Madison. The honorable sacred knights of the KKK showed up here at the park and were chased out within minutes because hate has no place here in Madison, Indiana. Mike Gams, a self-described anti-fascist dressed up like Spider-Man, was just one of dozens who showed up early to foil the KKK's plan. If they do this event again, uh, I bet Spider-Man and his amazing friends will be here again. The Klan had hoped to hold an annual cookout at this park, but it was over before it ever really began, with counter-protesters taking over the park first. <laughs> Just after 1.30, a small motorcade of KKK members first arrived. After revving their engines past the counter-protesters, about 10 Klan members parked at an adjacent pavilion with two carry-out pizzas in hand. We're not here to feed you! Law enforcement was there to keep the peace as counter-protesters outnumbered the KKK. You have a job? Where do you work? Hey, yeah, I work for your mom. After a war of words, the KKK left. Well, we're hoping this might have been a good reminder that, guess what, they're losing steam. Counter-protesters like Mary Childress believes when the KKK left, hate lost the battle. And Evelyn Wheeler and members of other churches showed up to make sure to clean the park in more ways than one. To bless the area for ordinary life, take away the hate, take away the hostility, take away the anger, take away the fear.
Just in, British lawmakers have just approved a bill to prevent a no-deal Brexit. This is a huge setback for the new Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. So let's get straight to CNN correspondent Bianca Nobilo in London. What, Bianca, what does this vote now mean for Boris Johnson? It's a crushing defeat, Brooke. It's his third in as many votes. So he's only been prime minister a matter of weeks. And already last night and two today, he's had three defeats by a margin of 28 votes tonight, which is quite comfortable against him, aided in no small part by the fact that he's had rebels from within his own party vote against his government. And why this is so damaging to him is the fact that it's a key part of Boris Johnson's negotiating strategy to maintain that leaving the European Union Union without a deal is still on the table. It's how he thinks the best deal can be achieved. Parliament is trying to thwart him in that agenda. It's also trying to ensure that he has to leave the European Union with a deal or ask for an extension, something that he's promised he's not prepared to do. So what does that leave him with? Well, what he's doing right now in the Chamber of the House of Commons is tabling a motion for a general election. He wants Britain to go to the polls again to give him a fresh mandate to deliver the kind of Brexit that he believes the people of the United Kingdom want. So the chain is now set in motion for that and no one quite knows where it's going to end up. There are lots of reasons why people voted Brexit, but many of them are covered by one word, sovereignty. Brexiteers don't like to share it, from how many fish you can catch to who gets to live here and which court ultimately has the final say over British citizens. Many Brits get pretty cranky at the idea of having to follow rules and regulations set in Brussels, often by people they haven't voted for. Three years after Britain voted to leave the European Union, the future of Brexit is still uncertain. After several delays, the deadline for the UK to leave is now the 31st of October and the new Prime Minister Boris Johnson has taken a harder line than his predecessor, stating that Britain will leave on that date, do or die. Johnson has said he intends to negotiate a new deal with the European Union, which removes the Northern Ireland backstop, the position of last resort, to protect against a hard border there. The backstop would mean that Britain retains a close relationship with the EU indefinitely. He also wants to change the political declaration. But time's running out and the EU has stood firm on its refusal to reopen the existing withdrawal agreement. Opposition parties had hoped to block a no-deal Brexit through legislation, but Johnson has asked the Queen to suspend Parliament from mid-September, a move that will shorten the time available to lawmakers to block a no-deal Brexit. Well, it's no secret that the EU regrets Brexit and sees it as a historic mistake. If a country as large and as powerful as the United Kingdom wants to leave a club, a club in which it helps shape the single market and benefits from security cooperation, among many other things, what does that say about the club itself? Nothing good. And so from the start, the EU's approach has been damage control. The British pound has slumped since the UK voted to leave the EU and it could fall even further in the event of a hard or no deal Brexit. Now that may be some good news for tourists hoping for a cheap trip to the UK and for some British businesses which are export heavy. But it's bad news for many. The cost of living for Brits is rising as imports become more expensive. And it's a similar story for some British businesses which have to import more materials. Plus, all the uncertainty over what the future trading relationship will be between the UK and the EU, well, that's forced some businesses to already hit their contingency plans. Big banks, for example, have already moved some operations from the UK to the EU. The UK has been in decline for a century. Brexit is a milestone on that downward trajectory. Far from taking back control and turning the UK's fortunes around, it will leave the kingdom's citizens more isolated from allies, alliances and markets. Economic growth will be slower, intelligence sharing curtailed. But it's not as bleak as it sounds. The UK still has clout. It remains one of the five permanent members of the world's most powerful diplomatic body, the UN Security Council. Change won't be overnight, but the future as it comes will depend more on the billions of people beyond its borders than in